Aloha mai kako. You are watching Hawaii Political Reporter. Aloha and welcome to Hawaii Political Reporter. Tonight we will be covering local, state, and national news and going into Dan Inouye, our U.S. Senator's death a bit and the ramifications of it on Hawaii. We'll have a great interview with Bob Petrici of Punapono Alliance telling us the latest updates in the PLDC and the fight for geothermal drilling ban and geothermal safety and health issues related in Puna, and we'll be going into uh, several other things. Well, there's mostly the typical business on the county council agenda, but there are a couple of things, especially for the executive session that interest me significantly, and one of them is Damon Tucker versus James Waimau, etc. Al civil suit. This is a uh, basically a suit where Damon Tucker, a, a news videographer and newsman, was apparently on the receiving end of what he claims to be police brutality or police uh, violence. And uh, we're very alarmed at this. And, of course, there are two sides of the story. We don't know what's happening. But uh, we know in general uh, there are many instances of uh, the law enforcement abusing people who are trying to bring things to light. And we know it's a very difficult job for the police to do. So, you know, I mean, we, we certainly don't want to impede them or disrespect them. But... Uh, you know, for example, here we see a California man. This is on Infowars.com, and this is dated November 25th, 2012. You could look it up. The, the headline would be, California man jailed four days for recording cops. And then we could get to, you could go to Damon Tucker's website, Hawaii News and Island Information, and uh, that's at DamonTucker.com, DamonTucker.com. And you could look for the police brutality, and this is from the desk of Gerard D. Leloy regarding claims of uh, Damon Tucker, and I think this is something that you should find out and look into. It's, it's certainly worth knowing. And if deserving, you know, give your support to Damon or, you know, possibly the police if Damon was in the wrong. But, uh, you know, certainly we need to be able to freely record what's going on uh, because human beings, all of us, will make mistakes. And also the pressure, it's good for all of us. I mean, I certainly listen to your feedback. I know we can be better here, and I listen, and I, I take that, and I respect it. And uh, that's the best way we can all, you know, serve each other better. Now we're going to take a scan through some of the latest Hawaii Free Press. I believe it's a compilation. It's sent to my email every week. It's a very, very good uh, source of information uh, I personally agree with a lot of what they bring up, but whether you do or not, it's information you won't get elsewhere. So I I suggest uh, you take a look at it and uh, see really what's happening because you're going to get uh, a lot more depth and a lot uh, breadth, more breadth of the news picture in Hawaii from this organization. So I'm just going to skip most of this news stories, but go over a few that uh, may be of interest to you. And I'm not really even going to get into them in depth. We're just going to give you the headlines and maybe a little comment. And again, you could follow up by looking at Hawaii Free Press yourself. So uh, basically the big story tonight, and this I'm taping this Monday night, uh, is Uncle Dan, Dan Inouye, is dead at the age of 88. Uh, they had a extensive uh, news on him and about his health. And, uh, you know, my best wishes go out to him and his family and everyone. You know, I personally disagree with most of what he's done, especially the last, you know, well, probably indefinitely. But uh, we, I certainly believe he was a good man and he did was what he believed as best as possible that was in his heart for Hawaii. And, um, you know, I think the military situation has come and changed, and I think we're really ready for a new generation. But... You have to thank Dan, and I'll tell you, he is going to have a his passing is going to have a gigantic impact on this state. I, if you've been watching this show, you know over the last few months I've been warning about this well before we knew he was in this health, and actually I've been speaking about this for a few years at the Hawaii County Council. Uh, the key reason why is Uncle Dan brings in two or did bring in 2.7 times the federal money that uh, we put back into the federal, you know, pot, so to speak. So he was bringing in a lot of money and. Frankly, I believe a lot of it was crony capitalism filtering down the ranks. But, you know, that's how the system works around here. And that's what a lot of people believe was, uh, you know, the way to do it. 
So it is going to have an impact, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see who ends up and, you know, how the chairs all, you know, move, you know, due to this. But uh, it is a major impact. And, uh, again, blessings and thanks because certainly there's been some good and certainly good heart and good intentions, even though the methods may be in question or certainly for some of us who are more libertarian or conservatively minded may uh, believe that there could be better ways which actually at this point uh, would probably be fruitful because if you're just dependent upon a unsustainable source you know that it's uh, not going to do you well when that source dries up and the other big source of course is the uh, shipping monopoly here which incredible amounts of money and this is not a union attack at all I personally am very neutral on the union overall but I do note that the, the union and the monopoly combination is paying, uh, bringing a lot of money back into the political power and party here. It's not an indictment of them, so to speak, but it is another source of, of crony capitalism, let's be frank. And it is also a, a situation that's costing the average consumer here three to five, well, let's say three to four times probably on average, the shipping cost per mile. These are the figures I've heard. And John Carroll is taking this issue on, and uh, I think it certainly should be looked at. I think there are ways that we could keep the union strong and go to the better aspects of the Jones Act and do what John Carroll wants to do, which is to make the product shipping into here. I think we could actually have a true win-win situation if people would open their minds on this, where we could have more uh, goods coming in and out critically, enabling Hawaii to compete with our goods uh, to, uh, you know, for agricultural and other things. <clears throat> so moving on, though, we're going to see uh, beyond Uncle Dan again. God bless and to all and say a prayer for him. I mean, one thing's for sure, whether you liked how he did it or not, the man definitely had his full being into, you know, protecting and serving Hawaii as best as he saw fit. So, I mean, you really have to acknowledge that. And uh, I think it's is going to be a little bit trickier time now for Maisie, but uh I think, uh, and I again disagree with her on most of, most of what she does, but I know that she has a good heart, and I know she's going to try to do what she can for us. So hopefully this will all work out the right way. One word of note to Republicans, please, being an ex-Republican myself, please do not retread. Let's not have a lingle again, you know, it, when a special election or whatever is called, please. Let's move on to Zhu, to Zhu, to Zhu, whatever you call it exactly, or something else. But please, not another New World Order, you know, uh, you know fake conservative, you know, that's not really going to serve anybody's interest from the past and incompetent at that. Sorry, but this is the truth. So please give us a choice or better yet, Pat Brock or somebody else can run, you know, for the libertarians. And uh, let's have a little choice here because we are coming into a new age and hopefully we can get some new ideas to spring the uh, Hawaii forward. OK, so going on back to the Hawaii Free Press, uh, we're going to run a couple of stories one of the ones that uh, stands out to me is Hawaii ranks 45th in business policy acts uh, index. This is obviously one of the reasons why, because we have the crony capitalism. We're not being forced to compete and we're not developing. It's like a human being that doesn't exercise, doesn't go to the gym, the muscles atrophy, the mind atrophies. And this is what's happening here. They have an article which I say, yay, 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 cut hold the tax increases and cut the spending. This is not to say, no, we don't want to cut the poor people in any of this. There is so much wasteful spending and they always cover it up and cut first the people who are most vulnerable, okay, and will squawk the loudest while they protect their cronies and the wasteful spending. So please, you know, come on, Aloha, give us Mike a break. Kako. You are watching Hawaii Political Reporter. With me now is Robert Petrici of Punapono Alliance and he has a couple of very important stories to tell us, one relating to Bill 292 and another to relating to the PLDC and proceedings going on in Honolulu. So, Bob, uh, thanks for being on the show, and could you please tell us a little about the 292, what happened, and uh, what your thoughts are on it? Well, um, Ross, Bill 292 was the geothermal drilling uh, ban from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. at night. Uh, so that passed the council on three readings and went to the mayor, and uh, to everyone's surprise, the mayor did sign the bill. So now there's a county law that forbids geothermal drilling from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. at night. And if, they, if anyone has ever been around the geothermal plant during drilling, uh, the noise is, is horrendous at night, and there are people that couldn't sleep for months. It can take up to four months to drill a well. And uh, so, you know, people 
were having trouble, kids were having trouble with their homework, and people were having trouble going to work. And, and it also causes a lot of stress and can cause health problems. You know, people need to sleep. So we're really happy that, you know, it was a, it was a, it was a lot of work to get that done. We're really happy that the mayor signed the bill. Yeah, I, I, to be honest, I think it's amazing work what's, what's been done with you and the community and Punapono Alliance. And, you know, as far as the drilling, you know, this is one of those situations, honestly, I was thinking about it, and I'm many miles from there, but I know I hate, I really hate noise, and that's one of the main reasons I thought I moved to Hawaii, to have a little quiet country situation. And being that this is primarily in a residential zone, I mean, this is, and there's very little, if any, zoned industrial down there that I'm aware of, and that it's wanting to proceed. This is actually, I mean, you've done what you can, but, you know, I mean, the mayor even, you know, dr- making the obvious and, you know, sensibly right decision to you know ban the drilling at night i mean frankly i don't think you should even be there in the day but i realize that's a a difficulty that you guys you know probably can't go beyond but uh i really got to give it to you and whoever i I understand that there was some specific people who made this happen and i think it's fantastic work fantastic work bob well there were a lot of people involved a lot of the community really turned out we had hundreds of people come out testify on those bills and, and that's really made the difference was the community spoke out pretty loud and clear you know we have some other problems with this geothermal uh, power plants and basically you know taking a heavy industry like geothermal and siting it right in the middle of a residential community is it, a problem and it was never addressed properly when they did it and uh, so it's been an ongoing problem that uh, and you know you can't put those type of industries right next to people. It has impacts. And they've always put the, the uh, interests of the company ahead of the, of the interests of the community. You know, so communities paid a very high price, in, not only in health and environment, but in property values and, and that kind of stuff. Hey, and, Bob, I have a question for you. I wonder if this was in Honolulu. How do you think it'd go there? <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, maybe if they put it out in uh, Diamond Head or <laughs> <laughs> Wildlife Ridge or even in Hilo in uh, Sun, Sunrise Ridge. <laughs> yeah, they think they have problems now. I got to tell you, I think that'd be pretty amazing what would happen. And it's I think it this boils down to, you know, you can't blame them for trying, but after they learned and saw what it is, and to me this is just symptomatic of, you know, a no-home rule and you know, rule from afar, and as long as it's not in their backyard, they don't care. So that, that's what we're finding out, you know, because we are now traveling to Honolulu to work on this issue. And, you know, you get over in Honolulu and, and uh, you find it. I don't know how else to say it except an ignorance, that, you know, of what it really involves. I guess it, it sounds pretty good if you're sitting in an office in Honolulu to, uh, you know, put a geothermal plant out on a lava field. and But, you know, they really don't know much about uh, much about it they don't really understand what's involved they're told that it's clean and it's safe and that those people out there just uh whining or nimbies or something and yep. uh, it's really amazing to me even some some of the people you would think would be more akamai some of the things that they're saying so uh, we're, we're aiming to change that we're, we're now moving to you know we're not moving physically there but we're moving our our um, educational campaign to honolulu well, you know, one thing before we move on to that, and that's a perfect segue, I, I have, must confess myself, it isn't just Oahu. I mean, I was ignorant of this, too, and I, I think unless you really listen, and this is what one of the things that your organization and others have done, you know, that's good work here is making the awareness. Because, you know, on the face of it, it does sound great, but then when you start to hear, you know, how it's affecting the people, it really changes your mind. But anyways, Bob, you were mentioning Honolulu, and you, I know you were recently there. What is happening in Honolulu? What's going on? Well, let me say one more thing about Puna, you know, and what's going on there. And You know, Puna is a very sustainable community where we have a lot of organic farms, lots and lots of people on solar, thousands of people off the grid, and, and they're environmentalists. And so, you know, you have thousands of environmentalists that are have a problem with this geothermal plant. I think people need to look at that and say, well, you know, gee, how is that possible? If this thing is clean and safe, why would all these environmentalists have such a problem with food? And that should turn on a couple of light bulbs. Yeah, that's a very valid point. Very so, valid yeah, point. as far as Honolulu, well, we got uh, we decided, Punapolo decided that uh, 
we had a change at the county council, and we had a new election, and we've got some new legislators up in Honolulu. We realized the problems were coming out of Honolulu, and we could only do so much at the county level. So we started, we made a contact list. We actually started reaching out to all of the islands. And a lot of that was spurred by Act 55, the Public Land Development Corporation, PLDC, the backlash from that. We saw, uh, because we were part of that also, because PLDC has to do with geothermal developments on uh, doing away with EISs and EAs and that kind of stuff. So we saw all the islands really rising up uh, against this. So we decided that, you know, we should try to build a coalition with all the different islands. So we, we are working with Kauai and Maui, and we recently went to Honolulu. And, you know, luckily for us, some really uh, influential people have, have decided to help us. And we had Dominic Yudong at the county council, who was the chairman for the last year, really went forward. He put forth Bill 292. And and then we've got Harry Kim now. And Harry Kim is uh, really wants to repeal Act 55. He wants to repeal Act 97, which is uh, a did away with the geothermal subzones, which basically means they can now do geothermal anywhere they want in any of the islands, and some of these other things. So we traveled with Harry Kim, myself, and a couple of other people to Honolulu, and we met with some of the environmental leaders over there, mm-hmm. some of these very big, influential groups. When and, was uh, this, Bob? When was this? So this was, um, what was that? I think it was Monday. Uh, oh, no, wait, I'm sorry. It was uh, Thursday, last week, Thursday. And, Around uh, the 14th, I believe, or something like that. Yeah. So well, the viewers we'll have an idea. What, Thursday. So yeah. we, we went and we had this first meeting, and uh, then we did a television show, a full mail over there mm-hmm. with uh, Harry Kim and, and uh, June James. It's her show. Mm-hmm. And myself and Tom Travis. And so it was an hour television show. And then uh, Harry had to go back and Tom had to go back. But me and Barb Cutton stayed and we went the next day and testified at a PLDC hearing they happened to be having at DLNR. And so that went really well for us. We got to test, you know, talk to them directly about geothermal and explain to them a couple of things, including how difficult it was for us on the Big Island to have a voice in the process because they hold these hearings in Honolulu. And, uh, you know, we really don't get a say. They're making all these decisions for these developments that, you know, are occurring you yeah. know, on the big island and all the islands in Honolulu. And, you know, so I, some of the people there, some of the board members actually heard what we were saying. You know, Bob, I, I think it would be a great idea there. And, I, and by the way, I'd like to thank Dominic, too, because he has done a lot. So that was 292 was Dominic's bill, or, you know, that you guys worked with him. But, uh, you know, one of the things, I think it was him, he really pushed the video teleconferencing here a lot, and, you know, maybe that's something we really need to start doing, you know, to get these uh, testimony off. The, I'm sure they don't want it, <laughs> but, you know, it, that would be something yeah. that could really help us. Well, I'll tell you, there's some people working on that, and, you know, we'll see what kind of resistance we get to that, but we we are definitely supporting that. I think we should have television, television, conference uh, hearing, so because how else can we really meaningfully participate? If you're not there talking to them, you're at a real disadvantage. You're, you're not going to be heard. You can send in all the written testimony you want, but face-to-face, eye contact, you know, being able to move around before the meetings and after the meetings and talk to people and get to know them, there's no substitute for that. Hey, Bob, how many people were there out of curiosity? Was it fairly packed or... Uh, for that particular hearing, there were a lot of different issues on the agenda. There were about 10 people there for the PLDC. It wasn't a an overwhelming PLDC hearing. It was that the PLDC was seeking exemptions for projects they deemed for the better, greater community good. Mm-hmm. And they were trying to say stuff for schools and this kind of thing. But with uh, Senate Resolution 25 and Act 97, which encourages the PLDC to develop geothermal for basically the greater public good. We argued that, uh, you know, putting a heavy in, because they wanted to do these exemptions on conservation lands. That's why they were before the uh, DLNR. So we argued that, you know, putting a heavy industry like geothermal in conservation lands was an inappropriate use, and they actually killed that. They, they didn't get the exemptions. Okay. 
Well, obviously, it sounds like progress is being made, and I understand. I think there's a new rep, uh, new speaker, and I gather a part of his uh, reason he won is to repeal, you know, the PLDC, which I'm sure you're much more aware of than most of us here. So you say there was uh, approximately 10 people there at that hearing. And I'm just out of curiosity, were those most of those people from Oahu or are they, are any uh, other yeah, islands? No, they were all from Oahu, but there were people like uh, Robert Harris, who's the director of Sierra Club. Mm -hmm. There was uh, Robert Frankel there, Kimo Frankel. He's a member of the Native Hawaiian Legal Corporation. And two people from the Union 5, the hotel workers' unions, they're real big against uh, for repealing. Act 55. Those are the kind of people that were there, basically representing groups. And this wasn't one of the main PLDC meetings. Uh, so, you know, normally they would have probably had a lot more people, but we got to make connections with all of those people, and we're, we're now working with all of those people. Uh, afterwards, we went outside and talked with everybody, and uh, the, the local five union reps invited us to their headquarters, so we went to uh, the office they had on King Street, and they had this amazing a two-story building, and upstairs they had a, what I would call a boilerplate room with about 20 desks in it, all staffed, uh, working for repeal of PLDC. I've never seen anything like it, so we've joined that group with that group, and we're in contact with them, and they're going to send some people here to help us. They were actually very influential the last election. They have 9,000 members, and what they did was go door to door in certain council districts or representative districts, and they got three of their people elected. They're going to help us with that. They're going to come here and teach us how to how to do a better job in getting people elected here. You know that mm -hmm. would better represent. Us. Sounds like it might have made the difference in a very key race here, uh, as being as close as it was. Yeah, exactly that kind of stuff. Well. Um, just curious, Bob. You, I, I can't believe this. Why are they? I'm. What is their? You would think, you know, the union because they're usually the ones who benefit <laughs> from that. Why are they against it? What is their? That was that was my thing. I was amazed, and mm -hmm. you know, it was a really interesting experience. And so, uh, well, they say in that most of their hotel workers, and they were the only hotel work, the only union that didn't endorse Billy Canoy, which mm -hmm. was another thing that was very interesting. Mm -hmm. But they uh, they say like most of the new hotel developments are non-union, gotcha. and a lot of them are more like a condo thing mm -hmm. where people own it and they have gotcha. less employees, and it's just they're not getting any jobs out of it. So they're uh, trying to keep the old uh, style structure in, in place. And they they also I think recognize that you have to have Hawaii has an environment that attracts tourists mm -hmm. and where they make their living off of as tourists, and if we pave everything and develop everything, they're going to, you know, that people are maybe not going to come. Yeah, I, I think it's already really past its peak, especially with all the uh, jets that are going everywhere now for fairly cheap, so there's no doubt about that. So, Bob, I, I'm going to ask you if there's, in a moment, to tell us how, you know, people could contact you. You mentioned Barb, you know, who should contact her, but also are there any last thoughts or any upcoming events, anything, you know, the people should be aware of? Uh, yeah, well, let's see. We have a fundraiser on the 20th of December at the Hawaiian Sanctuary. Uh, that's in Puna. I don't have that information right handy other than it's off of Highway uh, It's just past Highway mile marker 12. Just past mile marker 12 if you're heading towards Kalapana. You just, just past mile marker 12. It'll be the first right. And uh, I'll have all full details on that in a bit. We're going to make a little promo so the people can. All right. That. Thank you, Ross. And um, so we have our regular meetings. We've got a lot of other things going on, Ross. I mean, it's, it's amazing. I can't even keep up. Today, Harry Kim was in Maui. He's meeting with some of the big environmental groups in Maui. Uh, Thursday, Gary Huger's flying here from Kauai. He's a council member. He was in uh, administration up until this last year. Mm -hmm. We're going to be meeting with him and Harry Kim and um, just a lot of things. So, you know, we really um, move and taking this thing to the next level. And those are primarily rallying against the PLDC? Yeah, that's primarily against the PLDC, but we also have Brenda Ford is going to put forward a resolution to repeal Act 97, which is specific to the wow. geothermal subzone bill. And we also uh, are hoping to talk to Gary Hoosier about a concurrent resolution on Kauai 
at the same time to repeal Act 97. And basically part of what our, our like I was talking about at the beginning, is our education campaign is, these, you know, most of the people over there just really don't understand the issue. They've only, the geothermal has been, had a well-funded PR campaign. And so there's been a lot of press and a lot of, uh, you know, just talk and always it's clean and it's affordable and it's reliable and all these things. And, uh, you know, they never talk about the impacts of it and the downside and the, and the expense and how, how expensive it really is. So. And the, the millions and millions and millions, uh, actually hundreds of millions of tax dollars that have gone into it. Nine hundred million to one company last year, in the last in one year. Nine hundred million dollars, but two hundred million of that was was grants, and and one hundred seventy eight million was direct cash grants from the Department of of the Treasury. It was amazing to me, uh, you know, how things work in corporate world. It, it's just yeah. part of this whole thing. Yeah, it's we only have. a million bucks a kilowatt about. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean well, so, you, you know, know what the heck. <laughs> When you start thinking about it, is how crazy is it when they're talking about a sixteen billion dollar cable to an extension cord from here to Oahu, so they can power Oahu? Sixteen billion dollars when you can put solar systems on every house in the state for ten billion for less than the cost of cable. You don't have to build power plants, infrastructure, none of that stuff for less than just the cost of cable. We could put solar on every house and would. Pre- Far more power than they'll ever get out of these geothermal hey, power plants. Hey, hey Bob, <laughs> even even better, we can plug that cable into a Zone One lava that can't even be insured. So that sixteen billion can be just for sure serving us forever. Oh yeah, yeah. This whole thing is—I I mean, really—the more we get into it, the more it really just looks like uh, a boondoggle, a scam. It's why do we pay the highest electric rates in the country? And we have to look at we're being taken for a ride. We're being taken advantage of by politicians and corporations. And this is just part of that same problem. I, I tell people, wake up. You know, yeah. you pay the highest rates in the country for a reason. And these are the same people that are telling you now they're going to save you with geothermal. These are the same ones that have been robbing you for the last 30 years. <laughs> Well, that's that's a whole other story. We could be going into depth on that, <laughs> but I, I definitely appreciate it, Bob. It's great talking to you, and you know, please, you know, let us know anytime you'd like to be on. We'd love to, you know, support the group and what you're doing. We think you're one of the really most inspiring things going on in the political world now, and it's great to see it at our gr- local grassroots level. The the people that are being involved, and the name really says it all: Puna Pono Alliance. And I think we're going statewide bit by bit with this also. But really, thank you so much, Bob. We appreciate it greatly. I hope you get better there. Yeah, Ross, thanks a lot. You know, I, I just want to say thank you for all the uh, support you've given us over the last few months. And we really appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Hey, Bob, one last thing. Give us your contact address, uh, website, and, and you know, little thing on that, if you could. Okay, well, you, we have a webpage, punapono.com. And... Uh, then I don't have the contact email address for Puna Pono right handy, but I do have a phone number, 339-4344. Anybody can call us for information. That's Barb. That's the Secretary Barb uh, Cuttons. So please feel free to call us, and hopefully you can find the email and put it up on the video for us. We shall, and also Barb is working on does media contact, so if anybody sees us probably anywhere nationwide, they should, you know, give her a call. I'm sure she'd be happy to help you and, you know, bring this issue to light. Thanks again, <laughs> Bob. Let's appreciate it greatly. I'm sorry I cut you off. What were you going to say? Well, that's okay. Thanks, Ross. Make a great one. Aloha, bro. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha, I'm Puana. And I'm Beverly Frederick. And we would like to invite you to Solstice 2012, a benefit for the Puna Pono Alliance. It's happening at My Marker 12 on Highway 130, right outside of Pahoa, and bringing together Kirtan groups, musicians, and movers from all over Puna to raise funds for Puna Pono Alliance and the amazing work that they've been doing. It will be happening on Thursday, December 20th at 5 o'clock. But you can gather 4.30 or so, you know, get to know folks. And uh, pick up some more information about what's going on, Helco's unfortunate plans for Puna. That'll be, again, that's Thursday, December 20th at 5 o'clock. Hope to see you there. Very
Reserve is no more federal than Federal Express. Ba 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 ba. You try a hide and destroy a freedom, ma. You seek a gender. We know you know you anti-American. You come forward, American Constitution. 1913, corrupt in the system. DW dollar, hyperinflation. The Federal Reserve, controlled by Lucifer. <laughs> See you lying